Hello and welcome to the latest episode of Europe Climate Connection, a podcast brought to you by Climate Action Network Europe, which showcases our amazing network organisations across the region who are working on issues related to the climate crisis and energy transition. I'm Rachel Rabins and my co-host is Olivia Saxer. Hi, Olivia. How's everything going? Hi, Rachel. Everything's fine. Thank you. And welcome, everyone. We've got another fantastic episode lined up. We'll be focusing on Central Eastern Europe, and we have two very special guests discussing how the coal regions there can benefit from the European Green Deal, which was launched by the EU back in 2020. Yeah, developments are continuing in the region, with Bulgaria submitting their long-term climate strategy for 2050. However, with the war in Ukraine and the energy crisis, we still need to be careful not to take a step back to fossil fuels such as coal and gas, as this is an ever-changing situation and there is, of course, a risk of losing what has been achieved within Central Eastern Europe, particularly in terms of a transition that is fair for all. We're joined today by Radostina Slavkova and Simeon Gorov from Zazemiata, a Bulgarian organization that works with coal regions and support them in transitioning directly towards energy efficiency and renewable energy sources. Uh, so thanks for joining us. Maybe to, to kick it off, could you tell us a bit more about your work at Zazemiata and why support for the energy transition is so important, especially in Central Eastern Europe countries? Yeah, sure. Both me and Simeon are part of the climate and energy team of Zazemiata. But in general, Zazemiata strives to cover many different topics, including uh, air quality, food and agriculture, economic justice, not to forget also the zero waste team. So together we are combining our efforts to spread awareness about different environmental issues and what can be done to overcome them. And this is one of the topics we are working on. So as we mentioned already, the, the energy transition, this is a central topic in our work. And Bulgaria has delayed a little bit this process of, of transitioning. But on the bright side, this would allow us not to do any of the previous mistakes other countries did in the previous years. For example, the coal to gas switch. This is no more on the Bulgarian agenda. Thank you so much. So now, January 2023 marks the third anniversary of the European Green Deal, which is a set of policy initiatives by the European Commission with the overarching aim of making the European Union climate neutral by 2050. Can you tell us what, if anything, has changed in the region and what challenges are there still to overcome? In this period, uh, Perceptions on the Green Deal changed a little bit. I would say the, Bulga the Bulgarians were rather cautious and uh, kind of looking rather at the things that potentially could harm the Bulgarian economy and more specifically the, the energy sector, which is highly dependent on coal. But later they, were, they became more open towards the many, many different possibilities Uh, this green energy transition is bringing also in terms of worldwide bills and eventually allowing them to be energy independent. Like this is still in the process, but Bulgarian businesses and households are looking in that direction and are already investing their money as they can see the big potential and especially on, on the Air Force. Simeon, would you like to add anything to that? I would add that many Bulgarians are also starting to understand that different kind of health issues are being caused by the harmed environment. And step by step, I think Bulgarians are starting uh, also to think about the cost of health disease because it's not for free. We have uh, billings for energy, uh, we have bills for health and so on. So when uh, society is starting to look at the matter more complex, I believe it should bring us a uh, much better understanding and acceptance of what have uh, to be done and why uh, this uh, transition is that important. So earlier you said that public perception on renewable energy and climate had changed positively. 
on renewable energy. So can you tell us more about this public perception of renewable energy and climate emergency in Bulgaria, maybe Central Eastern Europe, and how it's changed in the past years, especially with the European Green Deal, and how uh, the impact of Russia's invasion of Ukraine has been I can cite some numbers from a sociological study uh, done the previous autumn, and it was done in, in 10 European countries, including Bulgaria. So the results were quite positive. The Bulgarian respondents were seriously concerned about the state of the environment and climate change, and nearly 85% of them were saying that the current government is not doing enough. High percent were saying that they would support the building of new wind farms or solar parks nearby their homes. A similar percent said that if energy cooperative is formed in their region, they would uh, gladly join one. So these results are from uh, autumn, but again, the, um, the perceptions haven't uh, changed too much. Although, of course, people now are much more concerned about their energy bills. And of course, it's it's incredibly an incredibly difficult time for people. How are you, Zaza Mieta, supporting people through that transition to renewable energy and away from those false fossil fuel solutions like gas and hydrogen? We are informing the people and we are preparing analyses that are showing the economical side of the benefits. When people see some numbers, it's getting better. Prices are high and people understand that uh, if the price of the gas is three or four times higher than it was last year, they will have to simply pay three or four or five times higher bill. Yeah, the main thing we're doing to help people cope with the increasing energy prices is uh, to share information from one side, as Simon said, to give them numbers and to help them compare different technologies. For example, for the individual consumers of, of fossil gas, indeed, the heat pumps are the most efficient option to choose and to go in that direction. And one of the newer directions of, na- of our work is uh, towards one-stop shop, the one place which will provide all the information needed for households for undertaking energy efficiency improvements. The, the households will have choice of different support measures, and it would be quite important to have up-to-date information on, on the steps to, to reach when, for what to be careful when the, the renovation works are happening. And this is a good transition to my next question. So it does need to happen. And also, have there been any progress? Has there been any progress in terms of reforms of the energy sector? Where are we at at the moment? What still needs to happen so that we actually get to this renewable energy and energy efficiency that we want? Yeah, that, that's a good question. Well, we are still in the process of harmonizing the Bulgarian the Bulgarian legislation with some of the European directives. For example, we still don't have definition of energy presumer in the legislation. This is still offending. And to accompany that, I needed some, some more procedure for easing the administrative burden for connecting small renewables to the grid. But especially in the, when we're talking about reforms in the energy sector, Many important ones were included in the National Recovery and Resilience Plan, and their implementation is, is starting. Another form uh, still not, not happening, transformation of district heating towards renewables. For example, if you take Sofia district heating, which is like the biggest in Bulgaria, and it's even almost entirely fossil gas, its share in the national fossil gas consumption is is almost one third from the total of uh, three cubic million for the whole of Bulgaria. So this is a very significant quantity, but we still don't see the plans for transformation. What is still lacking is the willingness uh, in the decision makers. Uh, but I hope this this will happen very soon. And so on civil society participation, NGOs at the at the start of the European Green Deal, they weren't actually involved in the in the process but now they are they've been invited to the table just how important is that civil society voice in making those positive changes to renewable energy 
At Florence, the, the beginning of 2020 was the establishment of the Bulgarian Consultative Council for the implementation of the Green Deal in Bulgaria, in this consultative body and also in the more specific subsections. And especially important for us is the Commission for Energy Transition, uh, which is kind of um, preparing the grounds for evidence-based uh, decision-making for choosing the Bulgarian co-exit date. So it's currently assessing several types of energy modeling so that uh, the final Bulgarian date can be really discussed with all the stakeholders and also to be evaluated in terms of price, co-benefits, etc. And yeah, as I said, we are part of this process with few other NGOs and also with your colleagues from Ken Europe, as we are in the preparation of a Bulgarian version of Tariff Agreement Compatible Scenario, which is uh, showcasing the roadmap for the different countries for reaching climate neutrality by 2050. We recently had a public hearing, but the version we saw was quite dissatisfying. Just to mention that uh, the document was not striving even towards full carbon neutrality, but towards some reductions. Yeah, many changes and actualizations need to be done in these strategic documents, also in the NECP, the National Climate and Energy Plan, so that they can be in line with the increased ambition on EU level as part of the Fit for 55 package. Civil society is here serving as the voice of the, of the ordinary people would want to be active part of the energy transition themselves as part of energy cooperatives or to become the so-called consumers, consumers who are producing their own renewable energy. I would say that even in the coal regions, the public participation is even more important. The people from the working in the coal sector, but also their communities and families need to imagine the alternative vision for their region. They have to provide feedback, what kind of alternative activities and economic sectors they would like to, to participate. The Bulgarian just transition plans are still not, not finalized. These documents are giving the general framework, but then it's at the heart of the local people, of the local communities to shape separate projects and to implement this, this transition. So, Simeon, have you also noticed anything additional throughout your work with communities and their energy use? Yes, I could add that uh, there is uh, some doubts about the future of the energy system because uh, many people have the difficulties uh, to get uh, out of the frame, out of the picture where a huge manufacturing is producing the electricity for the others. And very often people are just afraid that uh, if they have this freedom, I can call this freedom to assure uh, their own needs uh, of energy, they might get in trouble, like uh, not enough uh, energy for them or... Uh, some kind of technical issues and so on and so on. As you say, information is so key for people and so is social protection. So is there any concrete, much needed social protection, particularly for coal communities in the region, um, in the Central Eastern European region? And are these communities being invited to take part in discussions and processes that directly affect them? They have been consulted by the by the company which was uh, drafting the initial analysis on which the territorial plans would be based. But still, the say of the people is needed for the actual implementation of, of this energy transition plans in the three core regions of Bulgaria. We can see some, some good ideas for future development, uh, which would utilize the skills of the workers. For example, production of batteries or even recycling batteries. At some point, having different industrial parks, which are using uh, renewable energy and not to forget using um, deteriorated uh, lands owned by the mines uh, for for future production of solar energy and also for storing this energy but again it will also depend on the on the preferences of the workers themselves some of them might want just to retire earlier or to start a new adventure as um, so producers in the agricultural sector so everyone should be able to say what, what would be best for them 
And Simeon, what's your take on this? Yes, uh, one of the biggest uh, worries of people in those regions, especially those who are working in uh, coal mines or TPPs, is about their incomes next. Because uh, in the past, we were a situation when the government was promising bright future when closing uh, certain factories. But uh, as a result, many people are left with no job, uh, with no incomes. And this uh, negative experience uh, is what uh, makes people afraid from what is coming. And from my personal communication, people from this region, uh, they're telling, okay, there is no an exact plan. What kind of facility, where it's going to be, what kind of workers are going to be needed, but really, really concrete plans and concrete information and the concrete terms for uh, to fulfill these uh, goals. Yes, trust is super important for the energy transition. So now let's take a look at the general public participation. What do you think is the role of public participation in the energy transition in Bulgaria? Are there any main obstacles still to overcome? Okay, just a few words. I think public participation uh, can be the best fuel of those changes. Of course, uh, we are campaigning to finally have uh, implemented the energy communities as a structure, as a part of the country system, which I think uh, is going to allow people to even better participate this transition. Radi? Yes, that's That's right. What we are doing is just to try to facilitate that process and sometimes provide the information and the steps of, of citizens. How can they better defend their interests with uh, things like guidebooks for the active citizen or guidelines how to get access to public information they need or even with, uh, with our team of lawyers and with the support of client earth. Uh, helping them protect their interests in court. So there is a lot that can be done, just more people need to be aboard. Yes, we still have a bit of work to do, but it looks like the change is going in the right direction. So thanks so much for joining us, Radi and Simeon. That's it for this episode of the Europe Climate Connection. Join us next time when we'll be imagining a better future and finding out what system change has to do with the climate crisis. Thanks so much, Olivia, and our great guests, Raddy and Simeon. You've been listening to Europe Climate Connection, an original podcast presented by Can Europe. Europe Climate Connection is hosted by Olivia Saxer and Rachel Brabins. Samuel Martin Sosa is the executive producer and editor. Script by Rachel Brabins. Recorded and edited by Big Audio Media, who also provided training, mentorship and assistance during the process. Thanks, everyone, for listening. I hope you can join us next time.